Welcome to the report from Tiger Mountain, ladies and gentlemen. We're going to talk about life without Trump. Yes, a terrible situation. Uh, obviously, I've been a, a, a Trump fan for the past uh, at least five years. I guess he, uh, when he began to announce um, that he was going to run for president um, in uh, February 2016, I was in Bali and I wrote an article for Affirmative Right where I predicted that um, Donald Trump was going to be president. So hang around today. We're going to talk about the world, um, uh, the world without Donald Trump as president. Stick around. All right, the world without Trump as president. Many will think, hallelujah, who, who are not of the uh, new right or the uh, alt right or the affirmative right or whatever. I've been a, a long time um, Donald Trump fan. Um, I guess ever since he first announced he was going to get into politics uh, in February 2016, uh, I predicted he would win the election and he, he went he went ahead and did that. And um, obviously, I did think there's a lot of very interesting things about him as president. But, um, you know, obviously, he, he accept upset the deep state and he upset Western mainstream media and he accept the globalist cabal tremendously by constantly, um, you know, kind of waving, um, well, he would make speeches at, at the United Nations and he would make speeches at Davos, you know, where he would basically fly directly in, a, in opposition to the agendas of, of the elite, which was what I thought was fantastic about him. And, but we are facing a situation where he won't be president in a couple of weeks. So look, you know, I mean, I think, you know, you have to look at the positive and negative of, of Donald Trump. Um, the positive is, is that he really has exposed the, the globalist cabal. He really has exposed mainstream media as fake news. Um, you know, he really has exposed, they've really had to show their hand. I mean, there's a strong argument that the whole COVID-19 um, situation would not be around, I mean, without Donald Trump, uh, in the sense that they had to bring in something as drastic as a bioweapon from China to defeat um, Donald Trump. Um, uh, but, you know, of course, I guess if Donald Trump wasn't there, maybe they wouldn't have had to use such such stark um, measures against us. So I don't know, maybe he's, the cabal has had to speed up their plans in, uh, apropos of Donald Trump because he really was on the way to exposing them and possibly even defeating them. So, I mean, that's something that's interesting about Donald Trump, but I guess it has a negative side too in the sense that, um, you know, that... While Donald Trump has been a strong adversary of the cabal, the globalist cabal and, and the deep state and stuff and the swamp and all these people, he, he clearly is not strong enough to defeat them. Um, you know, I mean, that's not necessarily the fault of the guy himself. And I, I have a lot of respect for Donald Trump because I do think that no matter what which way you look at it, he's definitely tried to fight them. And he has tried to fight them. But the sad thing is, is he hasn't won. You know what I mean? Like, and it appears, um, I mean, regardless of all the Q nonsense you hear that's, that are still predicting, I mean, the guy's got two weeks left in office. He better fucking be quick if he's going to arrest 10,000 people and put Obama into like Guantanamo Bay and all with, with Hillary Clinton and God knows who else. Um, so, you know, he's, uh, I mean, the Q narrative surely has to just completely collapse now as, as utter nonsense. If I, if you look at the Q narrative, mainstream media was meant to, um, basically, um, you know, discourage um, Trump supporters. And the Q narrative, I believe, was disinformation as well. And that was meant to make Q supporters feel overconfident, that basically... If you're a Trump supporter, all you had to do was sit back. It's all a movie was one of the things. Grab your popcorn and Donald Trump was going to just take down the, the, the deep state. You know, one, you know, kind of kingpin at the time. And as it came closer and closer to the end of Trump's reign, as we're seeing now, nothing has happened. Hillary Clinton's never been arrested. She hasn't even had a parking fine, for God's sake. So, you know, I mean, this is what we're seeing. Um, you know, the, the Donald Trump has really, tr you know, really gone up against the powers that be. But he hasn't been able to defeat them. If anything, all he's done is anger them. And then who's going to have to bear the brunt of that? Everybody else. You know? I mean, we're in a situation now. We have this COVID-19 bioweapon from China that's on the loose. And we're all still in and out of lockdown. We have this you know, dodgy vaccine coming that we're not going to be able to fly, you know, or go to another country unless we uh, take the vaccine. You know, basically, the globalist New World Order cabal has descended upon us during the reign of Donald Trump. And... Um, you know, it's very disturbing. And, and what did Donald Trump do? Um, you know, I mean, the only country that seems to have done well out of Donald Trump is Israel. And, you know, it seems like they always win. Um, you know, Israel is always doing well. Um, and there's even an argument that Donald Trump was a kind of, uh, you know, controller position or something like that to kind of like sucker in patriots to reveal themselves and everything because now, you know, it comes the kind of Joe Biden time where he obviously uh, there's going to be a lot of uh, cracking down on people of the new right uh, and people who are patriots and nationalists and stuff. So, you know, I don't know. It's a potentially disastrous situation and... Um, you know, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, you know, as I said, um, 
I've long considered the idea that if you are somebody who is new right, um, or someone who's outspoken, someone even like myself, that you may have to enter what's called interior exile, which is where basically you just shut up. You know, you, you can't really talk about your politics anymore um, because you're living in a kind of you know soft totalitarian government uh, where these kind of ideas are no longer acceptable. And um, you know, I don't know. I mean, I'm going to assess the situation. I, if I still think there's freedom to speak, I, I'll probably still try and speak about these ideas. But I guess I'm going to have to assess it once Biden is in and once I start seeing what Biden does. I mean, I, I think Biden, um, he could, you know, just, um, um, he could take things slow. I mean, you know, because there's been so much chaos under Donald Trump that Biden could be a kind of stabilizing agent for the cabal. So whatever's going to happen under Bi Biden, it might take, they might go slow for a little while. I don't know. Or maybe they're going to rush things forward now because, you know, they've got momentum with all this COVID crisis and all the chaos that's caused by Donald Trump. So it's very, we're still in very interesting times. We're all going to keep a very close eye on what's going on politically. But um, I don't know. I mean, um, we're just going to have to wait and see. And that's all I've got to say today on the report from Tiger Mountain.